we often come across hoardings by the roadside or advertisements across internet about banks and other financial institutions offering loans at different rates of interest in an economy there are basically two classes of people one who have surplus funds in the form of savings from their current income and the other one who needs these funds to meet their requirements like to start a business to buy a house or a car or for funding their education and so on these surplus funds when kept in banks or invested in financial companies are transferred to those who need them but a price is charged for lending these funds an interest rate is the cost of borrowing money or on the other side of the coin it is the compensation for the service and the risk of lending money without it people would not be willing to lend or even save their cash both of which require deferring the opportunity to spend in the present since interest rate is cost to the borrower and return to the lender it affects the borrowing and lending both further investment and saving portfolio composition selection of projects and their lives capital intensity of production techniques chosen international capital flows and the distribution of income are also affected after studying this module you will know about interest rates and the factors that influence them you will also know about the determination of interest rates under the classical neoclassical and keynesian approaches we often come across hoardings by the roadside or advertisements across the internet about banks and other financial institutions offering loans at different interest rates in an economy there are basically two classes of people one who have surplus funds in the form of savings from their current income and the other are those who need these funds to meet their requirements like starting a business buying a house car and so on these surplus funds when kept in banks or invested in financial companies are transferred to those who need them but a price is charged for lending these funds an interest rate is the cost of borrowing money or on the other side of the coin it is the compensation for the service and risk of lending money without it people would not be willing to lend or even save their cash both of which require deferring the opportunity to spend in the present let us discuss different theories of determination of interest rates first is the classical theory that is propounded by ricardo hume and others second the loanable fund theory is propounded by wicksell d h robertson and several other swedish and british economists and lastly the keynesian approach propounded by j m keynes let us discuss different theories of determination of interest rates first is the classical theory that is propounded by ricardo hume and others second the loanable fund theory is propounded by wicksell d h robertson and several other swedish and british economists and lastly the keynesian approach propounded by j m keynes the classical theory this theory was propounded by ricardo hume fisher and others as explained by alam bhole according to his static theory the rate of interest is a real phenomenon in the sense that it is determined by the real factors it is the supply of savings 
and the demand for investment that determine the equilibrium rate of interest. The aggregate saving is the difference between the total national income and the total aggregate expenditure. The savings may be affected by individuals, households, business and the government. Given the current income, there is a natural or normal tendency on the part of economic units to spend that income on present or current consumption. That is, there is a time preference in favor of present rather than future consumption. To the consumers, business and government, money now is not the same thing as money next year. The money is valued more than the money next year. Because of this time preference, if it is necessary or desired that the current consumption should be postponed, there is a sacrifice involved in such a postponement. The various economic units can be induced to undergo this sacrifice and save if they are offered a reward for such an action. The reward is known as the rate of interest. The interest rate is a reward for the sacrifice or abstinence or waiting involved in the act of supplying savings. Interest rates are intimately involved with the role of time in economic activities and in the lives of economic units. They arise out of and in a sense they measure the preference for the present over the future. Irving Fisher particularly emphasized time preference or impatience or waiting or abstinence as a factor limiting the supply of savings. If people did not care about time, they would save money of the incomes so long as interest rate was positive. The existence of time preference is necessary to explain the existence of the interest. For a greater savings, high rate of interest needs to be offered. There would be no saving at zero rate of interest and greater and greater savings could be induced by offering higher and higher interest rates. On the demand side, firms and other economic units demand capital to make profits by producing goods. The investment takes place because by investment in roundabout or indirect methods or processes of production, economic units expect to obtain more consumption in future by sacrificing their present consumption. The opportunity to produce more effectively by using roundabout methods of production determine investment demand. While the saving schedule is upward sloping, the investment schedule is downward sloping. The equilibrium rate of interest is determined by the intersection of these saving and investment schedules in the economy. The classical view regards interest as determined by the demand and supply. The productivity of capital goods providing the main elements of demand and the supply of capital being limited by the reluctance to abstain from current consumption and do more savings. The rate of interest so determined is variously known as the natural rate or the full stock equilibrium rate or the classical real rate and the two real rate. In a static situation, this rate is not affected by the level of money and prices because changes in the quantity of money lead to a proportionate change in all the prices leaving the percentage ratio of money yield to money principally unchanged. Interest rates are not influenced by the behavior of banks and other credit institutions. 
according to the classical theory the rate of interest is a real phenomenon in the sense that it is determined by real factors it is the supply of savings and the demand for investment that determine the equilibrium rate of interest the aggregate saving is the difference between the total national income and the total consumption expenditure given the current income there is a natural or normal tendency on the part of economic units to spend that income on current or present consumption that is there is a time preference in favor of present rather than the future consumption irving fisher emphasized time preference as a factor limiting the supply of saving hence if people did not care about time they would save more of their incomes so long as the interest rate was positive the existence of time preference is necessary to explain the existence of the interest for greater saving higher rate of interest needs to be offered there would be no saving at zero rate of interest on the demand side firms and other economic units demand capital to make profits by producing goods the opportunities to produce more effectively by using roundabout or indirect methods of production determine investment demand while the savings schedule is upward sloping the investment schedule is downward sloping the equilibrium rate of interest is determined by the interaction of these saving and investment schedules in the economy the loanable funds theory of interest rates is an extension of the classical savings and investments theory of interest rates according to this theory the rate of interest is determined by the demand for and the supply of funds in the economy at that level at which both demand and supply are equal let us discuss the assumptions used in formulating this theory the market for loanable funds is one fully integrated and not segmented market characterized by perfect mobility of funds throughout the market there is perfect competition in the market so that each borrower and lender is a price taker the theory uses partial equilibrium approach in which all factors other than the rate of interest that might influence the demand or supply of loanable funds are assumed to be held constant it is the flow equilibrium of loanable funds which determines the rate of interest given these assumptions the determination of the rate of interest is easily explained once the demand and supply of loanable funds is specified this is where the loanable funds theory is claimed to be an improvement over the classical savings and investment theory of the rate of interest since besides the real factors of savings and investment it also takes into account then on the monetary factors of hoarding disorting and increase in money supply in the determination of the interest rate in this sense it combines both the monetary and non monetary factors having discussed the assumptions of loanable theory now we can specify the supply and demand equations of loanable funds other factors remaining constant only rate of interest can influence the demand and supply of loanable funds the loanable funds theory takes into account the non monetary factors like hoardings this hoarding and monetary factors like increase in money supply in the determination of interest rates the supply equation is where s is equal to the aggregate savings of all households and firms net of their dis saving which is an increasing function of interest rate dh equals aggregate dis hoarding of cash is also an increasing function of interest rate delta m equals 
incremental supply of money given autonomously. Hence, LS is an increasing function of interest rate. Now we will understand the demand equation. The demand for loanable funds given by LD is equal to the sum of gross investment expenditure and incremental demand for money. Following standard economic theory, each component of loanable funds demand, gross investment expenditure and incremental demand for money and so total LD is hypothesized to be a declining function of rate of interest. Equilibrium rate of interest is determined at a level where LD demand for loanable funds is equal to the supply of loanable funds or where we have equilibrium at equation 1 plus delta MD equals S plus DH plus delta M. In contrast, in the classical theory, the rate of interest determining equilibrium condition is given by I is equal to S. In this figure, LD, LS, I and S are the functions of rate of interest. Delta MD is not shown separately but can be derived as the horizontal distance between the LD and I lines. This distance increases as rate of interest falls because delta MD is hypothesized to be a declining function of rate of interest. The horizontal distance between the LS and S lines represents the sum of DH and delta M. This distance is shown to increase with increase in rate of interest because delta M is taken as exogenously given and DH is hypothesized as an increasing function of rate of interest. The equilibrium between LD and LS yields equilibrium rate of interest R1 whereas the S and I equilibrium of the classical theory will yield R2 as the equilibrium rate of interest. The Keynesian Theory In his book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, J.M. Keynes gave a new view of interest. According to him, the rate of interest is a purely monetary phenomenon and is determined by the demand and supply of money. According to him, interest is a reward for parting with liquidity for a specified period. Since people prefer liquidity or want to hold money to meet their various motives, they need to be paid some reward for surrendering liquidity or money. And this reward is the rate of interest that must be paid to them in order to induce them to part with liquidity or money. Further, according to Keynes, the rate of interest is determined by liquidity preference or demand for money to hold and the supply of money known as liquidity preference theory. According to Keynes, rate of interest is determined by liquidity preference or demand for money to hold and the supply of money known as liquidity preference theory. According to him, interest is a reward for parting with liquidity for a specific period. Since people prefer liquidity or want to hold money to meet their various motives, they need to be paid some reward for surrendering liquidity or money. In order to explain the demand for money and interest rate determination, Keynes assumed a simplified economy where there are two assets which people can keep in their portfolio balance. These two assets are 1. Money in the form of currency and demand deposits in the banks which earn no interest and 2. Long-term bonds. The decision about the portfolio balance can be influenced by two factors. First, the higher the level of nominal income in two asset economies, 
people would want to hold more money in their portfolio balance. This is because of transactions motive. Second, the higher the nominal rate of interest, lower the demand for money for speculative motive. In order to explain the demand for money and the interest rate determination, Keynes assumed a simplified economy where there are two assets which people can keep in their portfolio balance. These two assets are first money in the form of currency and demand deposits in the banks which earn low interest and the second the long term bonds. The rate of interest and the bond prices are inversely related. When the bond prices go up, the rate of interest falls and vice versa. The demand for money by the people depends upon how they decide to balance their portfolios between money and bonds. This decision about the portfolio balance can be influenced by two factors. First, with the higher level of nominal income in two asset economy, people would want to hold more money in the portfolio balance. This is because of transactions motto according to which at the higher level of nominal income, the purchases by the people of goods and services in their daily life will be relatively larger, which require more money to be kept for transaction purposes. Second, the higher the nominal rate of interest, lower the demand for money for speculative motive. This is firstly because a higher nominal rate of interest implies a higher opportunity cost for holding money. At higher rate of interest, holders of money can earn more income by holding bonds instead of money. Secondly, if the current rate of interest is higher than what is expected in the future, the people would like to hold more bonds and less money in their portfolio. On the other hand, if the current rate of interest is low, in other words, if the bond prices are currently high, the people would be reluctant to hold larger quantity of bonds and instead they could hold more money in their portfolio for the fear that bond prices would fall in the future, causing capital losses to them. Let us discuss the money demand curve. Quantity of money demanded increases with the fall in the rate of interest or with the increase in the level of nominal income. At a given level of nominal income, we can draw a money demand curve showing the quantity of money demanded at various rates of interest. As demand for money is inversely related to the rate of interest, the money demand curve at a given level of income, say, will be downward sloping as shown by the curve LP1 in figure 9.2. When the level of money income increases, suppose from Y1 to Y2, the curve of demand for money shifts upward to the new position LP2. The rate of interest, according to J. M. Keynes, is determined by demand of money, liquidity preference, and the supply of money. The supply of money at a given time is fixed by the monetary authority of the country. In the figure, LP is the demand curve for money at a given level of nominal income. MS is the money supply curve, which is a vertical straight line showing that 200 crores of rupees is the money supply fixed by the monetary authority. It will be seen that the quantity demanded of money equals the given money supply at 10% rate of interest. So the money market is in equilibrium at 10% rate of interest. 
there will be disequilibrium if rate of interest is higher or lower than 10 percent let us also see the effect of change in money supply on the rate of interest suppose the money supply increases from on to on figure 9.4 with initial equilibrium at or rate of interest there emerges excess supply of money the people would react to this excess quantity of money supplied by buying bonds as a result the bond prices will go up which implies that the rate of interest will decline thus an increase in money supply leads to the fall in rate of interest let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module first the interest is the price paid for borrowed funds this price is generally expressed as a rate percent per unit of time such as per year or per month. When so expressed, it becomes a rate of interest. The classical theory states that the rate of interest is determined by real factors, namely the supply of savings and the demand for investment. The productivity of capital goods providing the main elements of demand and the people's time preference limiting the supply. The loanable fund theory postulates that the supply of savings plus credit creation by the financial system on the one hand and total borrowings in the economy on the other hand determine the rate of interest. The Keynesian theory states that the rate of interest is a reward for parting with liquidity and is determined by the demand and supply of money assumed fixed by the monetary authorities in the economy.